So welcome everyone to the Spring Maxi 2023. My name is Courtney Lewis, president of the DMAWEF Board of Directors. I'm joined by Leanne Doyle, who also serves on the DMAWEF Board, and Crystal Poole, the executive administrator for the DMAWEF. We will begin our virtual competition with Christopher Newport University. Before the team gets started, I would like to introduce our judges. We have four judges with us today. Brittany Palayo of American Humane, Jamie Grams of PMG, Sydney Painter of Fused Fundraising, and Kayla Haber-Brown of our sponsoring agency, Chapman Cuba and Allen and Hussey. Judges, we will let the Christopher Newport University team get started. Am I able to? Yep, go ahead. Okay, thank you, all right. Good morning. We at Christopher Newport University hope you are all doing well today. We are beyond excited to share our creative strategies and ideas with you. However, before we begin, we would like to take the time to introduce ourselves. My name is Alora Sharon, and I am a senior at CNU. I'm Max King. I'm also a senior at CNU. I'm Sadie Renner. I'm also a senior at CNU. And I'm Tess Renz, and I'm an international student from the Netherlands, and I'm also a senior at CNU. Now let's. Now that we've had the opportunity to introduce ourselves, we can dive into today's agenda. This will include an introduction, a brief overview of American Humane. Um, we'll explain our research process, detailed overview of the campaign, and we will conclude with question and answer. Now let's shift to the most significant topic of this presentation, the American Humane Society. Their success and widely recognized reputation is telling of how committed they are to their mission statement, which is as follows. Founded in 1877 as the country's first nationally humane organization, American Humane is committed to helping ensure the safety, welfare, and well-being of animals. For nearly a century and a half, our innovative science-based leadership programs have been first to serve in promoting and nurturing the bonds between animals and humans. Their dedication to caring and strengthening the bond between animals and humans shows in the facts. During crises such as COVID-19 and the war in Ukraine, American Humane was able to save almost 500,000 animals. Throughout the years, they've also launched numerous programs in order to provide care for animals found in several situations. And taking it a step further, they also satisfy the mental health needs of both animals and humans by training dogs as service animals for discharged warriors struggling with PTSD. Donations are key to keeping this faithful organization alive, which I will now allow Sadie to further speak on. So before we dive deep into our research and campaign, it's important that we discuss the proposed challenge. The challenge we are faced with is acquiring new donors for the American Humane Society. Acquiring new donors for any nonprofit is difficult and expensive. We want to not only acquire new donors for the AHS, but retain those donors and maximize the donor lifetime value. We saw an opportunity in a particular market segment, Generation Alpha, who are the most inclined generation to give to a good cause. Through our PAUSE multi-channel campaign, we hope to tackle this challenge and help AHS reach its company goals. Now I will turn it over to Max to tell you more about the research we conduct conducted. So here we can again see American Humane's current mission statement, and below is what we want to get across. We want to get across that American Humane is still committed to promoting the welfare and safety of animals, but we also want to show that they have a desire to build long-lasting relationships with families and within families via a shared commitment to and love of animals. And now we move on to our SWOT analysis. While there are a multitude of important factors, we believe that from each uh, category, these are the most important ones. For strengths, American Humane has a long history of successful and unsuccessful programs to help guide them. Weaknesses, there's a lack of engaging content on their social media platforms. Opportunities, Gen Z and Gen Alpha care massively about animal rights and activism in general. And for threats, the looming possibility of a recession makes it harder to get donations as consumers are afraid to spend a lot. When it comes to our primary research, we divided this into four steps. First, we developed some questions to help guide us, those being, to what extent is American Humane already catering towards a children and family donor segment? And what opportunities are there for embracing a generational market development strategy within American Humane's current programs and initiatives? 
Then we analyzed and gathered some information from uh, their GuideStar page, their website, their impact reports, some programs, initiatives, ads, and social media posts. We organized and reviewed this data in an attempt to identify some patterns and trends related to our questions. And we then proceeded to draw conclusions to help inform our strategy and idea. After going through all of this, our key findings were that there are currently very little offerings to children and families. They tend to be more focused towards adults. What content they do have for children, while good, is scattered and relatively hard to find on their website. And there's also very little interactive offerings on the website. And from this, we have concluded that American Humane's current programs and initiatives could be greatly improved by making a specific attempt to break into the, the family and children donor segment. This would allow for a multi-generational strategy targeting entire families while also instilling a love of both animals and American Humane as they grow up. If successful, this would garner donations from parents as well as children when they grow up and achieve a stable income, thus hopefully fueling American Humane's long-term success. Our chosen customer persona is a Generation Alpha family. Meet the Harrisons, a family of three who live in suburban Nova. The Harrisons have a golden retriever named Daisy. On Friday nights, the family has game nights where they enjoy spending quality time together playing board games and card games. Olivia, their daughter, is a student who loves art, nature, animals, and dance. Our marketing campaign will appeal to this family by highlighting educational and entertaining content. We will emphasize the benefits of spending quality time as a family, as well as the importance of animal welfare. So the customer journey of the Harrison family begins when Jeff is told about the American Humane Society by a coworker, and his wife Emily has been researching online for the charities to donate to. The family has several touch points, including a seeing a humane Hollywood ad and finding American Humane on Instagram. They have positive thoughts about the organization, including that their values align, and they're extremely moved by the Pups for Patriots program. The family signs up for emails on the American Humane website, but finds it a bit difficult to find out how to sign up for the newsletter. They start to volunteer at local animal shelters and enjoy the feeling of helping animals. Olivia starts donating $5 of her monthly allowance, and Jeff and Emily make a one-time $250 donation, receiving a thank you email. They share their involvement with others, but wish there were more ways to help than just donating. This is where our proposed campaign comes into play. So why is our campaign centered around Generation Alpha, you may ask? Generation Alpha is very passionate about inclusivity, being the most diverse generation in U.S. history. Technology takes over their daily lives, spending much of their time online using social media and playing games. Generation Alpha is also very eager to make a difference and give back to their community. There's a lot of potential for Generation Alpha to be longtime donors to an organization if they truly believe in the cause and have been able to interact with information about the organization at a young age. So this leads us right into our campaign. Our campaign is PAWS, which stands for Protecting Animals with Smiles. This campaign is targeted towards Generation Alpha families, and the main element of the campaign is a kid's digital magazine, which is featured on the left. This is a multi-channel campaign using a paid list for mailing in person as well as email. The in-person mailing will consist of a card with a QR code on it that can be scanned by the receiver, taking them to the PAWS digital magazine made for children. We also want to facilitate our current donors that fit our target audience of Generation Alpha families and send them an, e an email requesting referrals. If they are to refer a friend to donate to the AHS, they receive one free pod magazine for their children to read and interact with that month. The Paws magazine will be a great addition to the fundamental programs already offered by the American Humane Society, and it would be featured under Kid Education section. The magazine will be digital, removing costs such as printing and shipping, but kids won't miss out on all the fun of real magazine as they will still be able to flip through it and interact with it through clicking, drawing, and typing. And we've prepared a small demo magazine for you to see. The magazine would be a monthly release, enabling the opportunity for seasonal variety with different animals highlighted on the front and color variation to best fit the season. Contents of the magazine include an animal IQ test, an AI-powered chat, a fun picture competition to be featured in the next magazine, an animal of the month who's to be featured on the front of the magazine, fun facts about animals and the American Humane Society, and lastly, coloring pages. 
Kids will be able to chat with animals and learn more about them in an interactive way. Each month, there'll be a new animal to chat with, creating the eagerness to receive the next month magazine. And lastly, there will be some coloring pages, which can be printed out or colored on the device the child is accessing the magazine on, iPad, computer, or phone. And since this is a teenager magazine, we would conclude the magazine with the question of whether they want to keep exploring, which would lead them to sign up for the monthly magazines. The magazine would primarily be sent out via email through the usage of a paid list. Also included in our magazine will be an animal IQ quiz for individuals to test their knowledge on American Humane and educate themselves with information regarding animals. This will serve as an interactive act activity for children. Each new digital magazine will focus on a different animal and certain questions on the IQ quiz will reference that specific figure so people can establish a connection to the animal and hopefully provide a means of support to it. Here are just some examples of what might be included in the animal IQ quiz. We have some myth or facts, guess the animal from the sound, or just some basic questions about animals. Another feature that would be a part of our digital magazine is a virtual animal chatbot powered by AI. Here we can, are going to see a brief video uh, that I recorded running through this and how it would work. Very, it is a very basic mock-up, but we believe it gets the point across. We can see here there, there's a few different animals that would be our personas for the month. And we can see briefly how after the answer is written, the animal responds in just a short time. We understand there may be some hesitancy towards using AI, but with GPT-3 and especially GPT-4's extensive protections against breaking its own guidelines, we believe that this is both a safe and fun idea. So for our direct mailing campaign, we will also facilitate a paid list. We want to email people or mail people a postcard promoting the Paws magazine. The postcard will include a QR code, creating easy access to the magazine. On the slide here, there's some examples of what the postcards would look like. And then to further promote the magazine, we want to place banner ads on animal care and parenting websites catered towards the parents of Generation Alpha. And we want to design a banner ad specifically for the kids on children game sites to have them interact with the magazine. In order to increase donations, we would make the magazine a paid subscription, enticing parents to spend money on edu educational entertainment for their children that also benefits a greater good. Some possible pricing plans could be monthly, yearly, or bi-yearly. All of this information needs time. I will take you through a briefly constructed timeline in order to see the success of this campaign. The first step, which was starting our research process in March, required us to understand the American Humane Society and the challenge it faced at that moment. We asked the question, how can we help and what practical solutions can we propose to this problem? Moving into April, we formulated answers to those questions by establishing a target market to narrow down our ideas. We decided that by targeting families with younger children would be our most effective strategy. As April closes out, this leads us into brainstorming campaign ideas, which meant essential consideration and creativity. Once the campaign has been established, we will analyze which digital marketing channels are best during the month of May, asking the question, where are we able to reach our target audience? Finally, we will create the campaign, which will take place during May to July. And once created, August will be time to adjust based on the differing needs of our target market and our budget. And lastly, we will launch the campaign and watch the profits increase. With all this said, we have developed three goals. First, we hope that by driving children and family to the website, we can increase donation by 10%. Then we desire to increase Americans Humane's house list by roughly 5,000 yearly, as this is the most profitable donor base. And we desire to increase donations by a minimum of 25,000 in the first year with this increasing each year as we add new donors to American Humane's house list. Here we can see we divided the budget into two different categories. I won't delve too much into it, but you can see at the bottom that the only positive RA is ROI is for the house list, which we kept in mind when developing our budget. Our goal with this was to increase donations within a year, but primarily increase donations over a number of years. So we, we do have a profit, over the years, this will rise as recurring subscriptions and more people to the house list increase these profits. The largest chunk is spent on roll-up promotions for direct mail going to the house list and other required lists. We also put some money in email marketing, but less as we primarily aim to reach our target via direct mail. Then we also distributed our advertising budget, 
relatively evenly between banner ads and search ads. And lastly, we have last, left roughly a $9,000 buffer in the budget in order to account for high inflation or other unforeseen costs. Thank you all for coming. We genuinely enjoyed taking on this challenge. And now, are there any questions? Nice job. Thank you, guys. Um, I'm curious what the most challenging part of this project was for you all. Yeah, so for me, the pricing method was something that we debated for a while. We didn't want to create a scenario in which children would nag their parents until they caved into buying a magazine. We wanted it to be something that both parents and children found beneficial and worth the cost. And we believe that with our final product, children would still ask their parents, but the parents would see the content and want it to be something that their child would consume rather than feeling like it was a waste of money that would just rot their child's mind for a brief moment of fun. It's instead something that we believe enriches the brain, also provides fun, safe content, and gives money to a good cause, which we hope that they would see. Um, and something that I also did not think would be a challenge, but actually was at the very beginning of this process was once we started the to find ideas, the creativity was flowing and we seemed to just not stop running out of ideas. And we had to kind of be realistic and say like, what can we actually do? Um, because once you start thinking of stuff, it's like there's a never ending list to that. And so we came up with so many great ideas, but we really had to sit and narrow down which ones we were going to run with. Nice. Anyone else have any other challenges? I think um, the Pune, as like seniors, it was a bit challenging to find that time um, to all meet and then be with all the ideas that Laura was referring to, to be productive in that short allocated time. Um, so that was definitely challenging being in, you know, your last home stretch, um, finishing up your college experience. Um, so that was definitely challenging, but it was also like very rewarding to be able to like wrap it up nicely and do something like rewarding as this. Thanks. Thank you guys. Yeah, thanks. Uh, great job, guys. Appreciate all the, uh, the creative you shared on the project. Um, I am interested in hearing about what your big takeaways are. You know, I think I think all of you are seniors, is that right? Yes. What, what yeah. will you be taking away from this process going forward in your careers? For me, because I'm going to grad school next year at the VCU Brand Center to study strategy. And honestly, this was the perfect preparation for it as it was pretty much what I want to do for a career. I, I want to work for an animal welfare nonprofit. Um, so just the whole designing the campaign, doing the research, it, it was just perfect for me. Um, bouncing off of Max, I'm also going to grad school after this to get my MBA at William & Mary. And so coming into this, I was a little hesitant about whether or not to take the opportunity. Um, and I think one of the key takeaways for me was that you might as well just say yes and take what comes your way and take advantage of that because this was one of the best experiences and preparation for grad school because I know that that's going to be 10 times more rigorous when I'm there. Um, so I think just kind of like taking on that challenge was really important for me to say to myself, like, rather than being like, oh, I don't have the time. Like I didn't make any excuses. None of us did. And I think that it worked out really well. We all didn't really know each other that well before. And now we've come up with this amazing campaign idea together in a matter of two and a half weeks. And so it kind of just showed me that we really are capable of a lot of things and just to take advantage of the opportunities that do come my way. Yeah, and going off of that, uh, my key takeaway was just the collaboration, watching it happen with all of us, all throwing our ideas around and coming to a conclusive, you know, final product. It was great to see that. And I think that's really important to take into, you know, the business world because you'll be doing that pretty much everywhere, collaborating with your peers. And I really enjoyed, you know, working as a team and just bouncing off all of our ideas and coming up with our final product. Yeah, and a big takeaway for me was getting, like, being able to get my hands on, like, working on a project for an American 
uh, nonprofit and getting that opportunity to see all the functionings of like you know, over here. <laughs> and I'm also going to be going to grad school after graduation, but I will be going back home uh, to the Netherlands. But I hope one day to return back to the States. So to have that experience and working with an American based company, that was like a really great experience for me and gave me a lot of like good insight. Excellent. I appreciate you guys sharing. My turn. Um, Thank you for your hard work. Um, the ideas were really great. Um, my question is, did you do you have stats on household size right now in the United States and kind of how that is, um, you know, if not that you're putting all your eggs in one basket, but your your strategy is household families. Um, do you have stats on what that looks like across the US? Are there certain maybe regions you want to focus more um, ROI in or do we kind of have a baseline of what that actual market size looks like? So we didn't, we don't actually have statistics. I do know that, yes, the, there's, people are not having children as regularly. Mm -hmm. However, with immigration coming into the U.S., our, the population is still growing. Mm -hmm. um, there's still families coming in. The population is not decreasing. Um it's more so that families now, whereas they used to be two parents and two to three children, I know now when people do have children, it's more one child with two parents. But I also do feel like that benefits us just because their attention will be more devoted to that one child to make it easier to have that whole connection being made because it's one thing, it's just one child's interest that they have to pay attention to. And so they can devote more of their time actually enjoying American Humane and the content that they provide. Great, that was just my question. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys for the work that you put into this and the time that you took to do this. Um, my question is, um, going back to the creative, were all parties involved in designing the magazine and what did that look like? It was definitely like a creative, like moment of like bouncing off ideas like everyone kind of pitched different ideas like I think Max came up with the AI like the chat situation because we were really just reminiscing about that time where you used to get a magazine or safari cards or po Pokemon cards and we wanted to make that like a digital experience we wanted to make that like oh you're going to collect all these animals that you can chat with so that was really like Max idea and then the coloring pages, I think that was like Allura, you know, and kind of like get them settled into your new home, you know, coloring that. Um, but then primarily like putting them all together, I did like the editing for it, but all the ideas for it really just kind of came through collaboratively and then just finalized it. I just made it in one thing. <laughs> I think too, we all used our strengths to the best of our abilities where Tess is very good at creating that very attractive magazine and we were able to tell her kind of like well my idea can kind of thinks of this and then maybe somebody else was like well we can do this and so if we threw it in then people were able to use their creative strengths to kind of make it look more like attractive um because some of us weren't the best with when it came to like making things look just like very ple like pleasing um so I think that we all pitched in the most fair amount and the most reasonable way but it was just we used our strengths to our best ability um where it was the most efficient for us as a group and all of our ideas came together perfectly to be in this digital magazine and once we kind of established our target market we all kind of sat there and reminisced on like Tessa had said what we used to get in the mail as children I know we kind of talked about I don't know if you guys remember the highlights magazines that um kids would get and that was like one of our big like points that we were kind of like, let's recreate that nostalgic feeling. Um, and once we settled with that, we got to make it our own creative way. And we definitely were able to just put our own strengths in there and bounce off of each other's and use our skills to the best of our ability. Thank you. Okay, well, if we don't have any other questions, then it's time for us to wrap up. I'd like to thank Christopher Newport University for serving as presentation number two today. 
I'd like to thank our judges for being here with us, Brittany, Jamie, Sydney, and Kayla. On behalf of the GMAWEF Board of Directors, thank you for serving as judges. And Christopher Newport University, you are free to go. Remember that we'll be showing the results of the competition on Monday. And judges, you may remain in the room and turn off your video and audio to score presentation. Thank you.